right, folks. Well, after about a good year or so, give or take, I finally got the Massey Ferguson MF-14 up here on the lift table in the garage. Got it power washed off the other day, and everything seemed to clean up all right. So the plan for this is just to go through, just a general revamp and going through service and all that stuff. And it's been sitting for quite some time since before I had it, and I've never heard this run. I ended up bringing it home last year and yanking it up into the woods and just letting it sit because I didn't have the time to go through it. So it does have the Kohler K321 14 horse on it. Hopefully everything's in good shape and nothing's wrong with it. That's all I'm going to have to get go, gone through. I'm going to see if I can pull the engine out of this too because it has some ice nest behind the shrouds. That's going to have to get cleaned out and because of the way the engine's mounted, it'd be easier to pull the shroud off if it's removed. So providing I can get the drive shaft to disconnect from the transmission all right, I'm going to be doing that. I know the dash is cracked on it. Unfortunately, they put plastic dashes on this, but there's not much I can do because I don't have another dash that I can swap out, and I'm not going to take the time to fix with all the plastic and everything. It does have a metal bracket holding it together up top. So hopefully I can come across one of them at some point. Everything else, sheet metal-wise, seems to be in pretty good shape. And this also does have the nice big three-point hitch on the back of it, which was the main reason why I bought it. All hydraulic lift. Has the wide 12-inch tires on the back. Hydrostatic transmission, high-low range. I think it's a peerless, if I'm not mistaken, with a different model pump hooked up to it. It's got an aluminum case. I know there's some stuff on that that's going to have to get taken care of. And Like I said, just a general going through. So... First thing we're going to do is get some stuff hooked, unhooked from this engine, probably pull a carburetor and some other things off, and see if we can slide that thing out of there and get it up on the bench. Carburetor is removed from the engine. As you can see, I had a little bit of water come out, which could have been from when I was power washing it the other day, but this has also been sitting outside for the past year. So all my bolts are out from the mounting holes down below, and I also pulled my other cover off of the transmission tunnel, so that way I can see my drive shaft which is on a spline shaft, so everything should slip forward okay. I don't think this fan's going to fit through everything here, but if I can get the engine to go forward some, I'll have enough room to take the screen off and take the adapter off that the U-joint bolts to on the flywheel, and then I can pull the engine out. So let's see if we can get everything to move here. Unfortunately, my oil drain is in the way on the other side here, so I can only go back so far because it's sticking through the frame. That might be enough there where I can grab these screws. All right, all my bolts are out of the drive shaft from the flywheel. So that's all loose now. And I can see if I can get this engine lifted out of here. Engine's all out. Came out fairly easy. A little bit better than I thought it was going to. So I'm going to have to finish cleaning up this frame, the stuff I couldn't power wash underneath the engine, get some of that grease and crap cleaned up, and then we'll be all set. And also you can take a look at the frame rails on this thing. That is quarter inch plate steel, and they sure don't make them like that anymore. It's got a nice heavy duty frame to it, so kind of like it. And I can also take a look underneath here, make sure everything's working as it should be. I do know I'm going to have to replace my voltage regulator, because as you can see, it burnt up at one point in time and the wires were pretty bad coming off of it so hopefully the stator is still okay and I noticed some other wires going down to the engine that were cooked also so probably gonna have to take a look at some of the electrical on this thing and as for the engine this was strictly a mowing tractor from what I could tell for years so granted the mice have been in here but there's a lot of grass and junk built up on the fins that's gonna have to get cleaned out and then obviously enough all over the air filter so Whoever owned it wasn't really big on maintenance, unfortunately. But we're going to get these shrouds pulled off, get everything cleaned up, and see what it looks like afterwards.
Not too bad compared to some of the ones I've pulled out, but still enough. So as you guys can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's so much junk built up in there that the air really wasn't getting through to cool anything. So not really a good thing, but get everything cleaned out. I'm also probably going to pull this flywheel off of here. Given that the stator wires were cooked, they might have to get replaced, which is easy enough. I can solder new wires onto the stator, and that'll take care of it as long as the windings aren't baked also. So I get the puller out and see if we can pop this flywheel off. At least from what I can see right now, the stator doesn't look too bad. It actually looks really nice compared to some of the ones that I've pulled apart. But I suppose we'll be able to see it a little bit better once we get some of this crap cleaned off of it. So to clean the rest of this block up, we're going to end up bringing it outside and power washing it. Before I do that, I just want to drain the oil out of this thing because it's some really nasty stuff that's left on it. Obviously enough. Unfortunately, they weren't real big on maintenance. Engine cleaned up fairly nice with the power washer. Last thing I have to do is dig some junk out of the fins in here that it wasn't able to blow out. So what I did was I just cut the ends of the wires off of the stator because they were pretty well cooked and some of the casing was chafed on it. So I'm going to have to solder on some new ends. But the first thing I did though was I hooked up my meter and as you can see we do have an open circuit. So my stator is good, nothing's burnt, no wires are disconnected or anything like that. So I'm going to go get my soldering pen, put some wires on here, see if I can keep it kind of neat, and we can start reassembling everything, get the stator back on, the flywheel, the shrouds, and everything like that, and start delving into the carburetor and the fuel system. All right, our stator cleaned up nice. I got my new wire ends soldered on there, so those are all set to go. So now we can get this thing installed, along with the flywheel and the shroud.
engine's all back together for the most part. So now we can pull apart this carburetor. It's a number 30, obviously for the 14 and 16 horse collars. And the throttle, bell crank I guess you'd call it on the top here, is loose as you can see. And it also had water sitting in it. And unfortunately the butterfly is stuck. So I know that's going to get taken care of. I mean, they're going to have to peen this back down or just put a little bit of a spot weld on the top to hold it in place. But we'll get the bowl pulled off of here, see what everything looks like. Well, it's definitely had water in it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but the float is all indented along the bottom where it had water froze and it pushed the float in. And the bowl is also full of white powder too. But I mean, aside from that, it's definitely salvageable. I'll have to get the float pulled out of it, get it completely disassembled. And then I can throw it into the glass bead blaster and that'll make it look like new again. Carburetor is all cleaned out. It came out fairly nice inside the glass bead blaster. It was pretty tough on the inside. I also put in a good used float and I also put on a good used bowl too because as you can see this one has got two rut holes in it. So that's obviously no good anymore. But I got the carburetor all back together. Got my fuel pump plumbed. I got a new set of points and new set of new condenser on here and my coil hooked up. So before we put this back in the tractor, I'm going to put it out on the welding bench outside and do a test run. Make sure everything checks out. I also put some good used oil into it too to try to flush some of that crap out that's inside of it. loose dipstick. All right, we'll try that again. Get a bungee cord on the dipstick this time. Well, the Kohler K32114 horse ran pretty well, as expected, I guess. So the only problems that I had with it was the dipstick popped out from the crank crankcase pressure. The little rubber grommet on the inside that holds it in the tube is worn out from years of use. So I'm going to have to see if I can find another short dipstick to put in here. And it has a slight rod knock. But aside from that, I'm pretty happy with it. There's no smoke or anything like that. So this is going to be it for part two. This is, seems to be a little bit more of an involved of a repair video than I was intending on, but not too big of a deal. But today I'm going to be getting this engine back in here, and part two will be along directly. So anyways, folks, there you have it.